I usually draw pictures. I sometimes paint. I am a realist. Oh, because I'm on my dress. These are not famous modern artists. They're not even famous kids. They're a group of everyday grade school kids from the New York area. We wanted to see if they could do as well as the masters. We gave them reproductions of famous paintings. I want an easy one. Paintings by artists like Picasso. Now, what's something really famous? What's this? Matisse. You want to do some cutouts? Uh, Rothko. I can't do that. You can make a red Julian square. Schnabel. <laughs> then we told the kids, hey, now do your own versions. It's starting to get green. Yeah. Like this. Now, this eight-year-old girl has just finished her version of a masterpiece by the famous Russian artist Kandinsky. And you know, I like hers better, but what does she think? This part is perfectly fine. This part is perfectly fine. These parts are horrible. So how do the kids do? Well, these are not million-dollar paintings by famous artists. This painting is by Emma Feigenbaum, age eight. Now, if you figure paint, canvas, it's worth what, $10? But how would Mr. and Mrs. John Q. Art Buying Public rate an original Feigenbaum oil on canvas? To find out, we went undercover to New York's ultra-trendy Soho neighborhood, where there's probably more art shown and sold than anywhere else in the world. Serious art, patriotic art, and on this particular Saturday, prank art. Normally, the Prince Art Gallery is devoted to paintings by gloomy, not fun to hang around with Russian artists. Perestroika, glasnost, the new way in the... Russian art. But today would be different. We rented the gallery for a very special show of paintings by our semi-gifted kids. Okay. Just as real artists do, we gave the paintings completely arbitrary names and prices. The Rape of El Salvador, that is $3,500 set. Green Menses, a steal for $2,000. And of course, untitled dreamscape, $1,100. Isn't that interesting? We said it was a show of exciting young artists. We just didn't say how young. Hello, we're having an opening day. Right, uh, if you'd like some wine, good. help yourself. It's free. I'd love to know what you think of our new artist. It just opened like 15 minutes ago, so oh, yeah, we're very excited, to say the least. Yeah. Two actresses played the parts of gallery owners. This one? Maria Murren. Okay, everything that I'm looking at, just very, very... And Maura Moynihan. How would you define that? <laughs> I don't know. Postmodern is already a bit of a difficult word in and of itself. It's controversial. Yeah. In the art yeah. world. Yeah. Because it's open to a lot of interpretations. Exactly. And then to have a neo-postmodern, and then neo-postmodern expressionism. Would you like a glass of wine? Remember, all these gallery goers are smartish. This is influenced by Monet. Grown up New Yorkers. Yeah, I would see that in it, too. Mm -hmm. No one is forcing them to blow a nice Saturday afternoon taking children's paintings seriously. A few in here are marvelous. Very seriously. So they feel like free expression. Maybe way too seriously. What do you think of her technique and her use of color and tension? You're really putting me on the spot. I, well, you're the expert. You're the, that's what I mean. I think the avant-garde is really important, but I think it's so terribly overused. It seems very childlike. Totally unconscious. Childlike. That's what I like about it. I think it looks great. I don't know if what you're saying is that they have a childlike quality, or if you're saying that like a kid could do this. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. What oh. I'm saying is that a kid can't do this, but when a child paints, it has a freedom of expression. It has a joyfulness about it that is wonderful, and you can't help but respond to it, to me. Like, for instance, look at that over there. It's incredible. A rebirth of an avant-garde that is paradoxically constant. Well, that's kind of why I'm writing the whole thing down. I want to think about it, because I can all... I think that this represents something here with the plates. The embrace of the spirit mother... Actually, if you do it this way... ...is really obvious. Now you can see some, something in there. What? Domestic disputes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sense. Definitely conflict. I'm from Berkeley. <laughs> it's like symbolic of a certain personality, and then it's expressing some kind of idea which is left up to you. Would you hang these in your house? Yes. yes. Does it go with your furniture, though? Uh, it's mainly gray and antiques, but I just like that. Well, let me get a price on that for you. 
All in all, our kids' show was a great success. In fact, we even came damn close to making a sale. I want to get the name of your uh, the place where you bought the jacket. Okay, let's meet uh, two of our artists, Zoe and Emma Feigenbaum, whose work you just saw. Now, do you guys feel that um, you've gained more of an understanding and an appreciation uh, for a painter because of the way he confronts a canvas and his struggle? Kind of. Zoe? Not really. Emma and Zoe Feigenbaum, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 